Welcome back to the SA Sports Show. We're back down here again at the 24-7 squash court at Tonsley, talking about mentoring and the benefits of mentoring today. We've got Stuart McCulley from Next Level Elite. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Stuart. No worries, so, thanks, we're going to James. talk about mentoring in general, and some people would have been through a mentoring process when they were younger, whether it was formalised or just happened naturally in a club environment or a state program. Yep. But for those of us who haven't been through anything formally, what are the real benefits that athletes can feel and find out of having a professional or a trained mentor? Yeah, absolutely. Great question, James, and something that I've learned over, over time as well is that um, some of us, as you said, do have those people who are mentors, whether they tried to or not. Um, but when it's actually in the structured process, those people who are the mentors are actually someone who's that neutral party. Um, and we've actually found if, it's, if there's someone that are, aren't specifically aligned to the sport, um, can have big benefits. They can also be within the sport, but the benefits of actually having a mentor is there's someone else you can you know, offload information, you can, you can ask questions, you can gain more information, especially from someone who's probably a little bit older than what they are. Yep. And if it's someone they can actually trust um, and talk about those different issues, they can, they can just gain more info. Yep, yep. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the benefits for the, the person being mentored. There's obviously going to be benefits that we don't normally talk about for the person mentoring as well. I and mean, you do it yeah. um, as a profession. Sure. What have you found that you've been able to learn and grow through mm. doing this mentoring? Mm. It's been pretty exciting, actually, James. Uh, what, what I've what I've learned out of it is that because I work across a variety of different sports, I think it's probably 17 or 18 different sports, I'm learning from the athletes. And so whether it's a 16-year-old squash player like Alex Hayden, who didn't think she'd be able to teach me anything, I've learned a truckload of information from her. So learning from people, knowing that every time that I'm talking to someone, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to learn some more information and part of my business is about giving back. So the more I can learn from other people, the more I can actually share that information with others as well. Yeah. Um, you actually learn to be a good communicator and to be a great mentor, you need to be able to listen. Okay. I think that's number one. Yeah. But then it's about to understand the person you're working with. If you don't know those people, you don't know how to or what 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 to what to give them, yeah exactly what to give them and the more you can understand how they how they roll the more you can pluck the experiences and the stories and the information that is essential for them yep. so I think I think that's that's the main key for that yep. person as a mentor I've been lucky enough to witness you doing some mentoring in our sport yep. um, there's some things that you do that I haven't been trained as doing a mentoring course that I went through so what, what extra things do you try and do that actually rounds out that mentoring process that really yeah. you know, get the athlete really invested in the, in the process of mentoring? Yeah, definitely. I think the first thing is getting the relationship. You need to be able to get the relationship with, with that athlete to actually say, no, no, what, what, what makes them tick and what, what, um, what's, what's their purpose and what, what gets things happening for them. But what I've found most beneficial is watching them in action. Yeah. So whether it's at training, and it's not necessarily the sport, it's how, how they're acting, do they ask questions, do they become nervous, um, and even in, in competitions as well. So the more I can see that in a real sense of what and goes on with them. Be a part of the different areas, oh, not for, just for sure. talking to them. For sure. Yeah. And, and as you know, I'll ask questions of you as the coach. So if Every athlete I work with, I try to actually introduce myself to the coach and yep. say, hey, your, your role is the coach. That's awesome. I'm here to support your athlete to be ready when you take them over as well. So we're actually working to, as, as, as a team. Yeah, that's great. Yep. Okay, great. Well, mentoring something to think about, bring into your club or your team and formalising it too. 
Back to you boys in the studio. Yes, thanks for staying with us on the Sports Show. Well, Baz, time to turn our attention to cycling. We have got a young lad in the studio, Jared Drizness, and he is going to be a beauty in the years to come. So you need to write that name down. The CEO's been good enough to come in as well. Lockie Ambrose. Lockie, thanks for coming in, mate. No, thanks for having us again. Jared, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. How are you? Very well, mate. Now, Saturday, off to uh, Belgium yeah, for sure 10 weeks, mate. What will that program be like over there for uh, you? So, yeah, pretty much just me and my mate Braden again over there uh, for some racing. Uh, we'll stay in, in Harold Becker. Um, yeah, about two, three races a week. Um, just local Kermises. Uh, got a French team to ride on a little bit as well. Um, so yeah, see how we go. And you're there. F you're there for a while too. You're not there for just a few days. You're you're over there for a, a bit of a stay. So yeah, I, I read with interest where your recent success in in Victoria surprised you. It, yeah, it, 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 uh, you you were riding, and then all of a sudden, well, <laughs> I'm in this, and, yeah. and whatever. In the end you finished uh, on top. Yeah, definitely. And you said you were surprised. Why were you surprised? If you enter an event, don't you enter it to think, well, okay, I can win this, or was it just a... Yeah, well, it was funny, because it was my first proper race back since yeah. uh, the National Champs at the start of the year. Mm. So I was a bit unsure of how my form was going. Okay. Um, I'd done a bit of different training in lead up, mm -hmm. um, so it was a bit of an unknown. But yeah, just just felt really good on the day, and yeah, I was able to pull off. Is that it? The day? It, it, yeah, well, it was, it, it's the same with most sports. I think yeah. you can have a day where, I mean, if you were asked to replicate that performance next week, would you be confident in doing that? At the moment, yeah, I would yeah. be. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty confident in the yeah. form. Um, but yeah, the first day it was a two-day tour, uh, three yeah. stages. So the first day I felt better than I expected, and then that gave me confidence yeah. the second day to to take it. Yeah, which you did. Yeah, yeah it was brilliant. So, so, mate, when you're running out to do something bold, are you confident that you're going to Very win? confident. Yeah, so yeah. give him a chance, mate. He's been for a while, so well, he had to yeah, work yeah. out where his form was at. Well, if I'm going to race Usain, it, 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 I'd get a place. Would you? Yeah. If it was just me and Usain. Yeah, a second. A second. Hey, mate, you're saying that, you're in a bit of a purple patch. Why do you yeah. reckon you're in a purple patch at the moment? I don't know, it's just a bit of a different aspect of training at the moment. I've been doing a bit more gym work, um, just feel really strong at the moment and just, yeah, a bit of a different twist to the training, so it's been working. When you talk about gym work down there at Sassy, who've been very good to you, so we'll come to your sponsors and stuff yeah. in just a minute, what do you call an average, or take us through an average week yeah. of, of gym work for you? Yeah, I'll, I'll do an average week of just training in general, so Monday will be like a, an easy ride and gym. Um, which How long can, in the gym? Uh, one and a half to two hours. Okay, um, an easy ride. Now, mate, remember an easy ride for Barry and I, mate, is a kilometre. What, what are you calling an easy ride? Uh, 25 to 30 25, that's an easy yeah. ride. Yeah. 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 Okay, right, easy ride. Can't um, wait to hear what a hard one is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then Tuesday will be like a, an ergo session or, or a long oh, road ride. I hate it. Um, yeah, so like some intense efforts and that sort of thing. Um, Wednesday morning will be an early bunch ride, um, so I meet, at, meet on the Longer Beach, go out of harbour and back with the bunch, yep. um, then off to, into the hills for some extra Ks. How far are we on this one? Uh, three to four hours, right. um, so it'll be above 100 Ks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then gym in the Arvo, so another yeah. two hour session in the Arvo. Um, you recover okay from that? So sorry to you know, interrupt your week. Yeah. You're on the Wednesday. We're only at Wednesday at the moment. <laughs> yeah. He's already ridden 150 and I'm k's. Tired. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm tired. I'm very Let's tired. Yeah. But, but 100 k's. Uh, yeah. And I know you said you're in the pack early, then up in the hills because that's hard yakka. Yeah. Then come back in two hours in the gym. What's your recovery like yeah, off it, the bike in the gym? Not bad. It, it's pretty important. Yeah, I do a lot of foam rolling, a lot of stretching. Oh, okay. um, nutrition's a big part of it as well now. Yep. Um, so your protein, your carbs, all that sort of stuff. So it all it all pays off. Okay. Thursday. Uh, Thursday will be generally another longer road ride. Um, um, maybe three, three and a half hours. Longer. With, with some... What is longer? <laughs> Help us out. Yeah, with... Um... What do you reckon the distance is? Oh, another 100k plus. Oh, there you go. Yeah, okay. just, just yeah, a casual okay. 100k. Right. I'm, I'm making a note of this. You're up to 250 <laughs> at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Still on Thursday, man. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Thought about um... buying a car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Car's got less k's than my speedo. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then we'll do so some strength efforts or something like that. Um, then off into the hills again. And then that night we'll probably go out to the velodrome, do another session. Um, and then Friday will be our easy day again with some gym. Okay, um, well, I know I shouldn't ask. What's an easy day? Distance? So an hour. So an hour. 25, oh, 25 k. k. Yeah, yeah, yeah 25 just, k. just okay. casual. Yeah, a counter lunch. Yeah, counter lunch somewhere. Yeah. A couple of coffees. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a couple of yep, coffees. So we're up to yeah. Friday. Uh, Saturday, Sunday to go. Uh, Saturday, Saturday's probably my, my biggest day. Uh, about four to five hours on the bike. Oh, wow. Um, so that, and I got work at, at 10 o'clock in the city, so I could do my Ks before that. Do you know, you have to, though, don't you? Mm. I mean, with the calibre of riders around the world at the moment, yeah. you can't have a day off yeah. or, uh, or slacken off on yeah. your training because you, you run nowhere. Exactly. These yeah. guys are doing the work, you have to do the work, yeah. Yeah, especially at cycling. You have to put the miles in, yeah. in the legs and everything, yeah. don't you? Yeah, it's not an it. easy sport. No, it's How'd not. you get into it? You were an old BMXer. I was, yeah. Wow. yeah little bikes jumping up around little hills yeah, and all it. of a sudden, bang. 
yeah. to cycling. Yeah, so I started started BMX when I was six, mm. um, and then finished that when I was about twelve. Success. So, yeah, yeah, I was a state champion a couple okay. of times. Yeah. Um, had some su- success young. Yeah. I had some good sponsors and stuff, so it was a good good like uh, entry level into sort of that sort of spotlight in a way. Um, just dealing with sponsors and that sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, a lot of bike skills I learnt, so that really helped me with my cycling as well at the moment. Um, just yeah, that nice transition into into cycling. Well, I'm trying to log the numbers in my head while you're talking about <laughs> your BMX, and I'm going roughly a thousand k's, somewhere between 750 and a thousand k's a week would be or, what you do. I reckon about 500 max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because okay. on the weekend I'll maybe do 150 on Saturday, and then yeah. maybe. Oh, 100 on Sunday, maybe. Okay. Um, so, yeah, about right. 500. Between five and seven, then. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. On a big week, yeah. Hey, Lockie, I know you're sitting there patiently, mate, and sorry we got drawn into Jerry. Um, when you watch him ride now, you've seen him develop. How do you think he's tracking? Oh, he's, um, he's, he's definitely on the fast track to success. Um, I know um, leading, so Jared's still quite young. Most uh, most track riders in cycling um, generally hit their peaks mid-20s and Jared's already been drawn into the, the high performance kind of training environment leading up to the Commonwealth Games and the um, it's a, a pretty impressive team at the moment. They are the first team ever to go 350, uh, sorry, 349 for the um, team's pursuit, which is a, a world wow. record and a pretty pretty huge barrier to break. So wow. just knowing that he can, um, you know, associate with those riders of that calibre um, at such a young age is, is a pretty impressive achievement. You guys have had a major restructure at uh, cycling. Yep, That's correct. A, a, yep. Not, a, not a small one here. We're not talking... A couple of changes. We're talking a lot of changes yeah. and massive change, big change yep. with some big names, yep. Brett Aiken and, yep. and whatever. These people are well known and whatever. Why the restructure? Why why have we done this? Because it, it seems to me the cycling is not going too bad. Yeah, like it's certainly it's one of those things. I think if you're complacent about where you are in in any kind of area, especially in sport, you can fall behind really okay. quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah. The way the, the world's gone in um, cycling in particular, the sports science is becoming more and more um, yeah. critical. So you're yeah. certainly seeing, um, you know, you're bringing a lot of different skill sets together. And I know Cycling Australia even have an aerodynamicist on the books these days, which is, wow. you know, pretty crazy considering mm. the, you know, the size of the organisation. So, yeah. yeah, different priorities and just trying to, you know, stay ahead of the curve. And, you know, British cycling is, is such a, well, they have such an, a strong cycling program. Mm. Um, and, that kind of a major rivals, just like in every other other sport, so we've got to make sure we're, we're beating them. So, yeah. <laughs> whatever it takes. Jeremy, what have you seen in the last couple of years? Biggest mm-hmm. change? What do you think the biggest change has been in the last couple of years? Uh, my own growth, really. I've just yeah. just growing heaps, um, my own development, just and yeah, knuckling down with with Sassy and training hard. Um, just keep pushing yourself. That's right. Now your dad, of course, good basketball player. His dad, Eric, okay. uh, more committed than your dad, mate, or, do you, uh, or does your dad tell you he's on, more committed than you, mate? On par. Definitely. On par, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. when he's fairly committed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mate. Question. Good luck. Good luck in Belgium in ten weeks. Hopefully, we can get you in and find out how that venture was. Lockie, appreciate you coming him. in. Mate. We're going to keep an eye on him. We'll, we'll, we'll we're going to watch him. And then uh, we'll, ten weeks' time, we'll come back and tell us how well he went. We'll know. We'll know how you went in Belgium. Yeah, it'll be on social media and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Yeah. You're just right. He was surprised that he won. He was surprised. He was surprised, surprised, he was surprised that he was, he was surprised. Surprised. He's the most surprised Blake we've ever worked with. So we'll look forward to those surprises. Hey, Good luck, stay with us. Thanks. Still Good luck. plenty to come on the show.